Uh, hello, everybody. I'm the Prime Minister of Australia, Malcolm Turnbull, and thank you for inviting me along here. It's, it's an exciting time. It's a, it's a time for innovation. It's a time for disruption. It's a time for words that don't necessarily go together, just saying them over and over again. And of course, here is an incubator, an incubator that you're getting a germ of an idea and hopefully you'll get that germ and it'll incubate into an incurable fintech idea like, like fintech herpes. And never <laughs> live forever on your ganglia. And I think that people enjoy listening to me speak. I certainly enjoy listening to me speak because I pronounce all of the letters in all of the words, like February. And it reminds me of the time when I was Minister for the Environment. And of course, I was Minister for Communications, and I like communicating. I like saying metadata. Most Australians say metadata, and it's got two Ts in it, metadata. You've got to enjoy speaking, enjoy opening your mouth and saying all the words. And sometimes I stop speaking, and I just spin off into an anecdote like this time that Lucy and I were swimming in the ocean, <laughs> down at the Bondi Icebergers. And afterwards I was showering with the nude men and boys. Please, a bit of decorum, I just find it very egalitarian. When a man's naked, you can't tell his station in life. Of course, they know I'm Malcolm. <laughs> I can see my head and they go, there's Malcolm. I say, good on you, good on you. You're good people, you're good constituents. And uh, I think that when I was down there at Bondi Icebergers, I thought, this is the democracy of the surf. Because I like phrases like that. I like phrases from the fintech industry. I like disintermediate collaborative consumption. I like democratizing your MPV or your VPL or whatever it is. I think it's a very exciting time for, for startups and for disruption and for the sharing economy. Basically, we're all just looking for the next Uber, aren't we? That's what we're looking for. And good on you, I hope you find it. And sometimes I just start talking about, well, I stop talking and I just stare into the middle distance and I suck the moisture out of my own smug mouth. <laughs> and then I talk about catching a train <laughs> with Christopher Pine. I said, it's okay, Chris, come out, mate. It's not illegal. Blow a dude and relax. That's what I said to him on the train. No, I didn't. I'm just joking. Um, but he does want to enter a liberal float in the Mardi Gras next year. Uh, I'm going to be the policeman. And uh, Tony has insisted on just wearing budgie smugglers. I said, that's not the village people, mate. That's just you. Anyway, I sometimes go home with, and Lucy's there and we open a nice bottle of San Gervese. And I just look at my priceless art collection and I think, what a wonderful country. What a wonderful country to be a rich, powerful white man in. I like that diphthong, O-W, power, shower. And it's good to see Sam here because recently I was at um, the ASEAN conference and then I went to APEC and I met Vladimir Putin. And, and you both have something in common. You're both very enthusiastic communists. Uh, <laughs> and I like your style, Sam. You're just like Vladimir, a little pocket rocket and good on you. Uh, you'll be in opposition until I'm dead and, <laughs> and so you don't have to think too much. Um, of course, when Ma, I'm speaking, you'll notice that I use this hand gesture a lot. I hold my hand up. It's quite mesmeric. I use my thumb like a rifle sight. And most people just look at my hand and think, wow, that's a rich guy's hand. <laughs> and they forget what I'm saying. And over here, I hold my glasses quite emphatically as if to say I read, <laughs> but my eyesight is poor. <laughs> now over here, I, I turn this hand from that plane to this one, and it's like, wow, he must be making some kind of a point there. And then I do something quite exotic. I just reach into the ether and pull a little string. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm as mad as a cut snake, but because I speak well and I'm rich, you're willing to trust me. <laughs> What is that? Is a little, am I switching the light on or off? Am I subconsciously tugging at your tampon string? What am I doing? What am I doing over here? Nobody knows. I'll do this and I'll do that. Then I'll just say, good on you. It's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to be alive. A lot of disruption. I'm going to be Prime Minister. And I understand how Australians struggle. I mean, I had to take a fairly large mortgage to buy my Italianate Palazzo in Point Piper. And I know what... 
<laughs> I've amused myself there. Um, <laughs> my own irony. Call myself by surprise. Now, I've invited my good friend, Koshi, Kosho, the Koshmeister, Dave, David, Koshi, uh, to ask me a few questions in, a, in an intimate Q&A. So please, welcome David Kosh back to the stage. Good thank on you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Great to have you. Good on you. I'll sit let's, over here. Let's sit down and... Metal um, chairs. My buttocks yes. are normally used to the finest Italian leather. <laughs> Are this, you is, this is quaint, isn't it? Are you slumming it across the bridge? Yes, tonight, sir. Or are you going home? Well, I, I never go north of the bridge. I used to pop over to Joe Hockey's place. <laughs> but there's never any food in the cupboard. So uh, <laughs> this is good, though. I like it here. I like stone and chalk. When you finish the ceiling, it'll be great. Or is that part of the vibe? <laughs> Um, going well in the polls at the moment. I'm going Honey very well. Honeymoon, how does that sit with you? Well, of course, there's only one poll that really counts. And you'll hear a lot of politicians say it. And for me, that one poll is the next popularity poll. Because uh, <laughs> I'm really slaying Bill Shorten. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, Mr. 14%. Yeah. Oh, Bill. I look at him and I think, what's wrong with Bill's head? And uh, I think that's the slogan we're going to run to the next election with. <laughs> Look at Bill. What's wrong with his head? <laughs> Australians won't know what it means. We all do. Uh, we laugh at Bill behind his back because they're like, what's wrong, Bill? It's a, just a little bit of a chromosome out, isn't it, that uh, head? What is wrong with Bill? Well, what's He's wrong with Bill? Advice. There's nothing wrong with Bill. He's a good Australian and a great guy. Um, he's, he's a Labor communist uh, and he wants to take your money from you and uh, that's just a bridge too far for me. Right. Speaking of the money, um, Cayman Islands. Uh, just tell us how the family finances work because we've got an informed audience here. Um, well, I... How do you do it? Of course, I've, I've copped some flack over investments I've had in the Cayman Islands, but let's think about the Cayman Islands as a place that needs investments. <laughs> Why should we be cutting off the developing world? <laughs> I see it as a handout. I'm, uh, I'm introducing some wealth to the Cayman Islands and I think it's racist and bigoted <laughs> to want to have to pull your money out of the Cayman Islands. <laughs> I, uh, I, have a, I have a financial advisor. I don't know his name, we just refer to him as The Funnel. <laughs> and he rings me up on a, uh, on a phone that's encrypted <laughs> and, and uh, I just follow his instructions. I think he represented the Nazis during World War II. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Um, are you worried about Tony hanging around? He's become, he's got an Tony, opinion on everything. I now. do worry about Tony, David, because he's mental. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what he's going to do next. I never feel relaxed when Tony's behind me with cutlery. It's like, oh no. Uh, and really, I mean, any. I think a measure of a man is if you're a triathlete, you're, you're basically half crazy. Uh, but he's out there on his board most mornings, out at Manly, trying to stop the boats. It's like, it's OK, Tony, it's just the Manly ferry. They're just people <laughs> trying to get to work. <laughs> Mad as a cut snake. I am worried about him. I think uh, he needs a good lie down. And he needs to be in his PJs and on his meds and, uh, and tucked away. Um, I don't want to make light of mental illness, but he's got a lot of them. Um, <laughs> We, we know you're a staunch Republican. Absolutely. What, what was it like going to Choggan and, and meeting a head of state? And so Well, Her Majesty was there, of course, yes. and uh, I've got a lot of time for the royal family, particularly Kate Middleton and her sister Pippa. <laughs> They're good people, and they cut a fine jib. Um, no, Her Majesty is a woman of quick wit, and she said to me, uh, Mr Turnbull, you're the Republican. And I said, Your Majesty... You're the Queen. And then I thought to myself, don't start with me, you flatulent old bag, <laughs> or I'll knock your hat off. I didn't say that, of course. I just felt her on the arse like Paul Keating did, and I can see the appeal. <laughs> she spends a lot of time on the Stairmaster, and those majestic buttocks are majestic. Right. This is all going to stay between you and I. I don't want you start-up people hitting Twitter. Okay. Of course, I'm an Insta. Follow me, please. <laughs> Okay, you recognise the Queen, which was a star. Absolutely. Uh, you didn't recognise Dave Warner. Um, <laughs> how did that come about? Well, I was in Adelaide, where yeah. you're very familiar with the Port Adelaide power, and I like that diphthong, power, shower, ah. <laughs> Feels good to say it. And if you want to speak like me, by the way, all you have to say is fire hydrant. 
Uh, <laughs> just long I sound, and hydrant has got two syllables. In fact, let's practice now, shall we? On the count of three, we're going to say far hydrant. And then you'll be speaking like Malcolm, and you'll be better for it. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, far hydrant. Good on you. You're good people, you're good constituents. Um, now, Dave Warner. Of course, I was just winding him up, but I, I haven't got the same enthusiasm for cricket as, uh, as John Howard had. I don't sit in bed with half a mongrel poking out of my PJs reading wisdom most <laughs> nights, so I couldn't give a shit who's playing cricket for Australia. <laughs> I like yachting. Uh, and, and what are you and Lucy doing for Christmas? Well, well, what's a Christmas in the, in the Turnbull house? It's a like? very traditional Christmas, David, Thanks. very humble. We start the day with foie gras and we move on to beluga caviar, Norwegian sourced tiger prawns. Then we have a cocker van, some beautiful champagne. And then I just, uh, I, I put a nice string of pearls around Lucy's neck, please. That's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> just a very simple, simple kind of an affair. <laughs> Right, do you have a nativity scene or, or, you, or, or you don't want to be mixed up for anyone in that? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, divided when it comes to divinity and, and belief in a higher power. I suppose I'm an atheist to a point. I'm a, I'm a nighttime agnostic. I pray to God uh, that Tony disappears at sea. Uh, what a delicious irony that would be. Get out of the water, Tony. Um, yeah, I hope he does a Harold Holt. No, but I... <laughs> what Lucy's done is get, uh, got a little figurine of the baby Jesus uh, with my face on it. Oh, and uh, we put it in the manger and we pray to it. That's my higher power, myself, David. Uh, Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. Would you give the Prime Minister, uh, a.k.a. Lawrence, a... Uh, thank you very much. Good on you. Good on you, Koshy. You're a good guy. You're all good guys. See you later, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And